excellent is thy name, O Lord. How excellent is thy name, how excellent is thy name, how excellent is thy name, O Lord. How excellent is thy name, how excellent is thy name, how excellent is thy name, O Lord, O Lord. Is thy name, how excellent is thy name. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Oh Lord, you have been so good, you are so good to me, oh Lord, you have excellent in my life every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. There is a name I know. It's Jesus' name. The Son of God. cross. There is a name I know. It's Jesus' name. The Son of God who died on the cross. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord, and he said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord, and he said, Here am I, send me. Here am I, here am I, send me. Anywhere I will go, and when I hear the voice of the Lord, I will say, Here am I, send me. Isaiah had the voice of the Lord, and he says, Here am I, send me. Here am I, here am I. Here am I, send me. And when I heard a voice, oh, the Lord, occupy till I come, occupy till I come. I am coming soon to take you home to rest. Occupy till I come, occupy till I come. I am coming soon 
Lights us up, lights us wash, and live until the massacre. Go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful world. Go and tell them, go and tell them, he is saving souls today. Jesus died for a sinful world. Will you tell them? Will you tell them? Jesus died for a sinful world. Will you tell them? Will you tell them? He is serving souls today. Lift up Jesus, he is king of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is king of kings, king of kings, and Lord of lords. Let us lift him higher, lift him higher, lift up. Jesus he is Lord of Lord. Lift up Jesus, he is King of Kings, King of Kings. I will go, I will go, I will go and tell them Jesus is alive. Will you go? I will go, I will go, I will go and tell them Jesus is alive. Will you go? Amen. You are all welcome to today's Bible studies in Jesus' name. And it is our pleasure to always welcome those who are fellowshipping with us for the first time. We are welcoming our newcomers and our new converts. If you are here today, it's the first time you are fellowshipping with us. You can just rise up on your, head, on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We want to give you a pastor's greeting. God bless you. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Our pastor, the general superintendent of this church worldwide, bid me to welcome you. And he wants me to tell you that you should keep on coming. Because as God has used him to be a blessing to thousands of people all over the world and in the church here, it will be a blessing to you also in Jesus' name. Uh, ushers are very close to you there. They will give you a slip to fill. Please Fill them correctly, and after filling them, please pass it across to the ushers. And God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Let us listen to the following announcement. Sunday worship service. We always have our Sunday worship service in all our district and in our location churches every Sunday by 7.45 a.m. And any time it is our turn to come to Bagada, we come to come and fellowship with the Lord. Time is 7.45 a.m. Thursday's leaders, Tuesday leaders development. All Tuesday leaders should continue to come to Tuesday leaders meeting by 5.15. 
Every Thursday, we have Thursday revival and evangelism training service. And it is the time we always uh, have uh, teach one another and uh, fellowship with one another and then receive the power of God for service. Saturday workers meeting is for all workers in Deeper Life Bible Church. Thank you and God bless you. Let us rise up as we sing from our gospel hymn and song. In number 107. In number 107. Go and tell them. Thank the gospel of salvation to a world of dying men. Tell it out to every nation till the Lord shall come again. Is the church's great commission. This the master's last command. Christ has died for every creature. Tell it out in every land. Christ is gathering out a people to his name from every race. Haste to give the invitation, eh? Shall end the day of grace. Give the gospel as a witness to a world of sinful men till the bride shall be completed and the Lord shall come again. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Jesus died for the sinful man. Go and tell them. Go and tell them he is coming. He is coming. He is coming back again.
today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our prayer, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The second book of Moses, called Exodus, chapter 21. Chapter 21. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him unto the judges, he shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To sell her unto a strange nation he shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar, that he may die. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together, and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his money. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servant, or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth, or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he have gored a son, or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit and not cover it, and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good, and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. 
And if one man's ox hurt another that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also they shall divide. Or if it be known that the ox hath used to push in time past, and his owner hath not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let us remain standing as we give our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Raise up your tithes and offering as we give unto the Lord. I read from the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now wherewith said the Lord of hosts if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Shall we raise up all our tests and offering as we offer unto the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless and worship your holy name because we are a faithful God. Father, as we offer unto you little from what you have given us, we pray, O oh Lord, you bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Enrich all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. Our officers are beside you. Please drop your tithes and offering in the bags that are being passed across to you.
We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
like an eagle. Raise with the overtaken speed of Elijah. Obtain favor like Queen Esther. He has laid all your sicknesses on Christ our healer. By his stripes I am healed. Experience freedom from sicknesses, luck, loss and enjoy an increase on all sides like Job. In this month's Global Crusade, themed Supernatural Freedom Through Christ, hosted by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoi, happening live in Benin. Special guest music ministration by Dan Lutin. What's our motive to fulfill the Great Commission? What's our purpose to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Also featuring a ministers, church workers, and professionals conference, themed fulfilling the ministry with heaven in view. The youths aren't left behind. As I succeed, you will succeed. As I progress, you will progress. Every hindrance will be taken out of your way in Jesus' name. As they are arising and shining with the Impact Academy, you shouldn't be left behind too. Join us from the 25th to 30th of May at Charles de Gaulle's Stadium, Port Novo. The supernatural awaits you through Christ. Are you ready to be freed? about superhero that captures our imagination. Maybe it's their incredible powers. 
fearless bravery, unwavering commitment to justice. But what if I told you there was a real life superhero who could help you become a star in your own right? Meet Jesus, the ultimate superhero. Jesus is the hero who will always stand up for what's right. In the STARS program, you will learn from Jesus how to stand tall as a rising star in your own life. You will develop new skills, build strong relationships, and positively impact your community. Something bigger is on ground. As an international evangelist, an ardent lover of children and youth, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumu lands in Abuja this May 2023 for the Global Youth and Children Convocations. STARS 2023. Thursday, May 11 to Sunday, May 14, 2023, with a special evening family revival on the 13th and Climax Family Sunday Worship on the 14th. All live at the prestigious Moshuda Biola National Stadium, FCT Abuja. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will be revealing tested and proven secrets to set you on a star ride. Of solution has now come. Amen. With Jesus by your side, you discover the power within you to become the best version of yourself. Join the STARS program today and let Jesus help you shine like the star you were meant to be. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers, and he says unto them, Follow me. Underline those words, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway led their nets and followed him, and followed him. That's the word that still comes to everyone today. Follow me, he's saying to the sinner. Get up, rise up, follow me. He's saying to the believer, come closer, come closer, follow me. He's saying to every member of his church, get up again, follow me. You have to listen to that message again from Christ. And you need to hear from Christ again as he says, examine your steps, examine your life. Examine your disposition. Examine the original decision you took. Examine your dedication today. Follow me. There are things you cannot take along. As you get up and you follow Christ, you will not take the mindset of the publican with you. You will not take the mindset of a fraudulent um, commercial person with you. You will not take the mindset of a sinner, of the old creature. There are things you have to leave behind. You cannot take the yoke with the world along with you. Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He had said, the wide gate leads to destruction. The broad way leads to destruction. And if he called anyone, he's calling that person to come through the straight gate that will not take you and your sin, that will not take you and the world, that will not take you and any evil. 
that will not take you at any appearance of evil. And so when he says, follow me, it's of the understanding. You're coming out of the broad way, and you're coming into the straight gate, into the narrow way that leads to life eternal. Everyone he called, he called them with that understanding. They were leaving darkness behind. They were following him as the light of the world. They were leaving Satan behind, and they were following him wholeheartedly as the Savior. They were leaving everything that will not help them, profit them in walking in the narrow way to get to heaven. And they were leaving all those things so that honestly, wholeheartedly, sincerely, and with faith, you'll follow the Lord in the narrow path that leads to heaven. We will follow the Lord acceptably. I will follow the Lord acceptably. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us today, and he wants you to understand that you must follow the Lord, follow the Lord, follow the Lord faithfully, faithfully in your character, faithfully in your conduct, faithfully in your lifestyle, faithfully in everything you do. Don't look at persecutors, don't look at detractors, don't look at the conditions around you. Follow the Lord, follow the Lord and make up your mind. You'll be a new creature in Christ, a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away, all things have become new and the Lord will give you the grace to keep on doing what is right every moment without ever backsliding in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Brethren, a very important invitation has been presented to us. Follow me. You will follow Christ. I will follow him. Peter and Andrew heard those words. They left their nets and followed Christ. Pray that God will help you. Pray that God will strengthen you. Though the days are evil, this is the time you should make up your mind to follow Christ. As we, you make up your mind to follow Christ. James and John have the same words. They left their nets and follow him. I will follow. You will follow. God wants every one of us to be involved. Don't be a spectator. Because there, there is a time of reaping. Today, the Lord is saying the same words to us. Follow me. Follow me. Are you a sinner or a backslider? The Lord is saying, follow me. As we are praying, make sure you are praying. Make sure you allow God to touch your hearts. This is a time we ought to go out and talk to the people. Walking with all your hearts. Walking with all your strengths. How are you following the Lord? Are you following the Lord afar off? Are you following the Lord afar off like Peter during the crucifixion trials? He was afraid. You don't need to be afraid. As long as the Lord is with us, we will follow. The apostles, they follow Christ closely. They are no more. They are in heaven. This is our time. Are you following the Lord with the same zeal you had at the beginning of your Christian life? Pray that your first love will be restored. Pray that God will help you to dedicate everything to him. Commitment to pray, commitment to preach the gospel. The gospel has power. Are you following him? Are you following with the mindset of the publican? Pray for grace to follow him. 
with the right mindset. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. We don't just be a hearer, but that the Lord will make us a doer of his words. The Lord is calling you out of the wide gates and broad way into the straight gates and narrow way. Pray for grace to follow him obediently and to walk in the narrow way. Obedient bring, brings blessing. The disciples left their nets to follow him. What have you left to follow the Lord? You need to leave all. Have you left your pride? Your worldly affections? And your peculiar gains to follow the Lord? Pray for the grace, pray for courage to leave all and follow him. Let's pray together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you for the charge to follow you. The disciples left their nets and follow you. Lord, grant us the grace to leave all and to follow you in Jesus' name. We know that the road is narrow. Yet we will follow. The journey may be tough. Yet we will follow. We will follow till we will meet you face to face in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for bringing us to the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And thank you for our loyalty. We thank you for everything you are doing. We ask, oh Lord, that your revelation be made plain, clear to everyone today. In Jesus' name, bless us as we study. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We come to our Bible study again. And this time we're in the book, in the epistle of Paul to the Galatians. Today we're starting with chapter 1, verse 10. Please open your Bible, verse 10, all through to verse 16. Or do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. In verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Verse 12, For I neither received it of man, Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. In verse 13, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Verse 14, And profited in the Jews' religion, above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And then in verse 15, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I comfort not with flesh and blood. Those are the verses we're looking at today. 
the authoritative revelation of the saving gospel. The saving gospel, the word of Christ, what Christ has done for you, for me, for the whole world, and what that implies, what that creates, generates in our lives. And it is the gospel, the good news, the word that saves and it is authoritative. Here Paul, the apostle, gives us the assurance. He said, I certify you that this gospel, this word that I preach is the gospel which the Lord had given unto him. There's authority behind that gospel, power behind that gospel. As we look at these verses today, we're looking at it under three perspectives. Number one, pleasing the supreme God as saints in Christ. Pleasing the supreme God as we have been born again, we're children of God, we're servants of God, saints in Christ. Number two, preaching the saving gospel as servants of Christ. We please God, then we preach the saving gospel. Number three, personifying the same grace separated unto Christ. Look at number one there. Number one is pleasing the supreme God as saints in Christ. Let's come back to Galatians chapter one, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Here Paul reveals to us his own goal in life, his own pursuit in life, and his own dedication in life. To please God as the servant of Christ. Look at three things there. Number one, the demand to please God above men. Number two, the devotion of pleasing God rather than men. Number three, the damnation for not pleasing God but men. Let's look at number one. Number one is the demand to please God above men. Once again, Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 10. It says, For do I now, that is, I, Paul, do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, if my goal, if my effort, if my kind of devotion is to please men, for if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. What a revelation that to be the servant of Christ, a preacher of the supreme God and a preacher of the saving gospel, we ought to concentrate on pleasing God rather than pleasing men. If our goal, our desire, our pursuit, our concentration is on pleasing man, any man, any woman, rather than God, then we are not servants of Christ. It says in Matthew chapter 17, looking at verse 5, talking about Christ, uh, God himself says, while he yet spake, that is Peter speaking uh, at that time uh, when they went to the Mount of Transfiguration, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the clouds, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, our sanctifier. The Lord Jesus Christ, our perfect example. Please, the Father, God, all the time. 
they could have pleased Mary, but no. He could have pleased his own disciples, but no. He could have pleased himself, but no. He could have pleased the Pharisees or the Sadducees, but no. He pleased God all the time in everything, in small things, in big things, in great things, in little things. When he was strong, when he was physically tired, when he was weary, when he was hungry, all his desire, all his aspiration was to please the Father God in heaven. And the Father, the Almighty God himself, testified concerning him, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. In verse 23, it tells us, and it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people as the Lord Jesus Christ had pleased the Father. And the Father said, Hear ye him. Today we are told again that as the Lord, the Son, a Christ, a Savior, a Sanctifier, a Healer, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as he pleased the Lord, He's giving us the word. And the Lord wants us to look at Christ, his example, and look at Christ, the forerunner, and what he laid down for us. And he wants us to hear him and to please him. If anyone, man or woman, high or low, great or small, does not hear him, that prophet, that high priest, that king, that Lord, if anyone will not hear him, then the Bible says, Him, ha, whoever they are, shall God destroy from among the people. In verse 26, it says, Unto you first, God, having raised up a son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. The Lord Jesus Christ came. He came to do the will of the Father and he sacrificed himself. He gave himself and now the Lord wants us to listen to him and to please him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. That's how to please God. We we'll hear the gospel, accept the gospel, embrace the gospel, stand in the gospel. That's pleasing God, and that's the demand of God. It tells us in verse 2 there, it says, by which also ye, are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. In verse 3, it says in verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, I delivered unto you above all, I delivered unto you this saving gospel that came from the Lord. It says, that which I received. That the faithfulness and as the demand of God that what we deliver, what we declare, what we preach, what we proclaim will be that that we have received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then in verse 4 it says, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to to the scriptures the demand of God if we're going to please the Lord is that 
we look at the Lord, we hear the Lord, we receive from the Lord. If we're going to please the Lord, everything we have received from the Lord, we declare, we preach, we proclaim, and we uh, give to the people. We look at number two there. Number two is the devotion to pleasing God rather than men. When we're saved, our minds are turned away from pleasing men. When we're born again, our hearts are turned to the one who has sacrificed, who gave himself, who shed his blood, who died for us, that we might be saved. When we're saved, our whole attention, our whole affection, then comes upon the Lord. And we fix our gaze, we fix our mind, we fix our affection on the Lord and the Lord alone. We're devoted to him. We're committed to him. We're consecrated to him. And we lean on him in everything. The devotion to pleasing God rather than men. There will be men that will still demand that we please them. We run after them. We obey them. And we bow to them. And we're subjected to them. But because of our commitment to the Lord and consecration to the Lord, we're devoted to pleasing the Lord and pleasing Him alone. Why? It's the only Savior. Why? It's the only sanctifier. Why? It's the only one that can take us from earth and take us to heaven. Why? It's the only one, the very source and the foundation and the fountain of all blessings in our lives. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. That's why we're devoted to him rather than to any man on earth. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He has done what no other person has done and what no other person can do. He shed his blood. He died. He suffered. It was great agony and he endured everything for us. And it is only through that sacrifice, only through that shedding of the pure blood, of the spotless blood, of the sinless blood, that we can be saved. Because of that, our dedication, our devotion, our consecration is totally unto him. And this is what he has done, we're told in verse 18 of that same Acts chapter 4. And they called them, and they commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 19 says, And Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. They said, you can judge. God is creator. You are creature. You can judge. God is our maker. And God is our master. Christ is our master. You can judge. Christ died for us. But you, you didn't die for us. You didn't give us salvation. And you don't have any power to take us to heaven. You don't even have the love to take us to heaven if you could, but you can't. And so you can judge which is right in the sight of God, whether to hearken unto you for tradition, for religion, or to hearken unto God for salvation and for redemption. Then in verse 20, in verse 20 it says, For we cannot but speak. The things which we have seen and heard. That was their devotion. And that ought to be our devotion, our consecration, our commitment. We're looking at chapter 5, verse 28. In chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly, strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? 
and behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They had been warned, yet they kept on preaching. They said they could persecute them, yet they kept on preaching. They had laid hands on them, imprisoned them, yet they keep on, they kept on preaching. Now for us today, those of us who are here, those of us who are in the country, those of us in Africa, those of us in the free world, nothing like that had been done against us. No imprisonment, no terrible persecution, no warning from the powers that be, and yet, are we as devoted as them? They suffered, they kept on preaching. They had pain, they kept on preaching. Pressure on them, they kept on preaching. If they could do that under so great a pressure and persecution, how much more those of us who live today, the filled Jerusalem, the city, with the doctrine of Christ, that Jesus saves, that Jesus heals, that Jesus delivers, and that Jesus is the way, the only way to the Father, the only way to heaven. And that's what we're to do today. Then in verse 29, we're told, Then Peter and the other apostles answered, Peter and the other apostles answered, Peter had had a change, a great change, a great transformation. This was the same Peter that denied the Lord because a maid said, you are one of them. And he said, no, I don't know what you are talking about. But now, saved, restored, strengthened, sanctified, filled, saturated, empowered, and beloved by the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost. He had the power now to devote himself completely to the Word of Christ and to the work of the Lord. This devotion that pleases the Lord. When we're saved, we're so grateful to God that he has done this for us. When we're saved, there's an internal change, internal transformation. And that transformation of heart makes us to devote ourselves unto the Lord. And the fears we used to have, the trepidation we used to have, the trembling we used to have, and the inner kind of weakness we used to have, all that is gone. The power of the Holy Ghost and the strength of the Lord has now come in. And now we can tell anyone who wants to challenge our devotion to the Lord that we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's what find in all these apostles. And then when Paul came, the same thing with all the persecution and all the suffering, he said, am I trying to please men? Am I trying to please God? If I yet please man, then I should not be a servant of God. And then he said, his devotion, his commitment, his consecration, his calling, his devotion was to please the Lord all the time. I pray that same courage will come to every one of us. That same power will come to every one of us. And that same steadfastness and stability you know that God is the only one to obey and God is the only one to subject and submit ourselves to the Lord grant unto everyone the Lord grant unto you that what he has called you to do you will do with all loyalty and faithfulness without any fear of man or consideration for man in Jesus' name. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it tells us, and we are his witnesses. You are looking for his witnesses. You want to persecute them. Here we are. 
you're looking for his witnesses you want to arrest them here we are you're looking for his witnesses you want to imprison them here we are you want to know the people that are committed to filling jerusalem and filling our city with the word of god and the gospel of the lord here we are we are his witnesses of these things and so also is the holy ghost whom god has given to them that obey him i pray that he'll give us this courage he'll give us this fortitude he'll give us this loyalty and this devotion in jesus name we're coming now to first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 it says in first thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 4 but as we were allowed of god to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak as god has looked at us and of all the people in the world he has chosen us he has selected us he has ordained us and he has put us in place and he put us in trust with the gospel even so we speak we're so grateful that of all the teeming multitude of the world, the Lord will choose us because of that we speak. And we give the honor to God who has honored us, who has favored us, and who has sent us forth because of that we speak. Not as pleasing men, not as pleasing men, the fear of man will always make anyone to please men, whatever the position, whatever the authority, whatever the commission he has, and whatever knowledge he has, fear, fear of man will make us bend, will make us cringe, will make us tremble, will make us fall like a slave and will make us submit and surrender the good thing we have surrender it to the hands of men but paul the apostle said was saved was sanctified was filled with the holy ghost were committed were transformed we have the mind of christ and we have the image of christ because of that we do what we do we speak not as pleasing men but god which tries our hearts and then in verse 5 he tells us for neither at any time used we flattering words like politicians neither at any time used we flattering words like those who deceive 